Well, howdy folks, welcome back. As you can see, we got a real mess right now going on. Uh, completely diverting from other projects like the, um, uh, the Z1R. I got the engine over there, um, which is uh, on the other lift. It's gonna be torn down here shortly. Obviously the top end's off on it already, you saw that. This is my 82 Magna. Let me show you what's going on with it. All right, as maybe you don't know, but many of you I'm sure do. Uh, this is a sidecar rig. Um, this is my sidecar, which is no longer attached, and it is kind of a bitch to get off of there. The way I have it hooked up, it's kind of a Rube, Rube Goldberg thing. But anyway, I'm going to do some re-engineering on a few part of that, parts of that, but that's another time. So the sidecar came off because I had to get it up on the lift here. I could have done this work down here on the floor, but then I'd be blocking this access. So I said, what the hell? So anyway, here's the deal. I went to put a tire on yesterday, which I did. I had to replace the rear tire. And I put the tire back on after uh, mounting it and uh, doing balancing and so forth. And the next thing you know, I spun it and I hear this. Maybe hard to hear on camera, I don't know, but there is a repetitive uh, knock in here, click knock. And uh, that's bad. And so uh, basically, um, you know, I got to investigate and see what's going on. Okay, so what could be causing this is uh, there's a, let me explain how this is set up. You have a counter shaft that is essentially across the engine coming off transmission. Um, the primary shaft and is the main one off the clutch and the counter shaft's off training. And then there's a bevel gear at the end of that counter shaft, so it's facing left to right or across the frame, basically. Then you have a, another bevel gear that makes that 90 degree turn to the output shaft side, the output bearing and the output spline um, that comes straight toward the back and articulates with the drive shaft. Right after the uh, drive shaft uh, articulates with it, there's a small U-joint uh, and then it goes straight back to the differential. I'm thinking it might be this U-joint, but I'm not 100% certain. It's very difficult to pinpoint the noise even with a stethoscope or using the uh, screwdriver to the ear thing. But it's definitely coming strongest right there where, where, um, where I'm describing as far as the location goes. I've had this apart before. Um, I had this complete output um, side cover off uh, a few years back. I forgot exactly the reason why I had to do with replacing some seals, I believe. They were only replaceable from the inside. I can't exactly remember. Um, it's pain in the ass. The whole back end's got to be torn apart. So what we're going to do this is we're going to do it in operational stages. We're going to get the whole back end torn down as far as the wheel, differential, and then get the, um, well, we're not going to take the swing arm off right away, but I think I'm going to have to. And then we'll get that drive shaft out. Take a look at the drive shaft because we can pull that right out the back. Take a look at that U-joint. The U-joint is, is toast and we're pretty much done and I can spin the uh, engine most likely maybe from uh, the spline and in, in transmission rather and see you know whether or not it's still making a noise maybe maybe not I, I don't know yet so uh, that's what we're going to do first we're going to check the uh, that section of it and then we'll uh, have to move on further if we got to pull the, the um, swing arm we will so let's get on it because um, we're burning daylight order of operations for removing the rear wheel on a magnet is pretty simple undo the nut that's 22 millimeter socket and then it exposes that bolt so we can wrap that bolt through. Uh, once we loosen this pinch bolt, which is already loosened because like I said, I had it off yesterday. Uh, we, I like to disconnect the uh, brake right from here so I don't have to readjust it. But since the sidecar is disconnected because that sidecar is a brake and I kind of adjust them in tandem. But I guess it doesn't matter, but I'll pull it off here anyway. And then we'll get that separated. There's all there. Uh, the, instead of a torque arm or a torque link where you'd see typically to a rear, rear brake that attaches to this uh, frame so it won't spin when you hit the brake. There's a torque pin. There's a little pin that goes in and locks it to the actual swing arm. We'll take that out, it's a 14 millimeter. We'll bang the axle out and then uh, take the rear wheel off. Let me go ahead and do that off camera and then we'll come back. Then we can slide the whole wheel over to the right and clear the the uh, spline on the final drive where it articulates with the drive side of the wheel. Next step here, we got to get the differential out pretty easy. You're going to pull this one shock. There's three bolts that are 14, actually three nuts, 14 millimeter uh, socket or wrench on it. And then we'll get this thing off and slide it out toward the back. There's definitely going to be some oil that comes out because there's a, it's kind of hard to describe. It's kind of like a torque link, not a torque link, but a damper. There's some sort of a hydraulic damper in line on the um, drive shaft. I'll show you too when we take it out. I don't think this one works uh, because it holds a little bit of uh, gear oil supposedly 
and then when you stick it into the uh, final drive it seals that off because there's an o-ring and it doesn't come back out but it always does so i don't know if it's bad or the o-ring I, I don't know but we may end up solving both problems though let's take a look at it and we'll see what we've got All right, well, this one was holding some um, fluid, so that's good. Uh, maybe it was working. Anyway, take a look at what we got. Here's your uh, differential. Um, for the input side, you have a spring that keeps the tension up against the drive shaft, so it's actually pressing into the motor. Um, keeps it from, you know, that lateral thrust from occurring. Uh, the, this is usually not a problem unless it's uh, pissing fluid through the seals or something, and this one's not. So we'll set this aside. It looks fine. I don't think this is it. I mean, certainly you could have noise from a differential that telegraphs up the drive line, but I tested it by listening at the differential itself, and I just couldn't couldn't hear really hardly anything back here. Now we're going to pull the drive shaft out. I don't know. See, there's a there's a notch in it. A detent this way so in the center here it's kind of loose I just got a feeling that this isn't it though I just got a feeling I'm trying to keep it in camera and frame splines look good Boy, yeah, it's just it is a little bit well, let's look into it a little bit further. Mess, mess, mess. I'm going to put this in again to see if I can get it to line up and turn the motor. Well, that's interesting. I don't really hear it now. I do have it um, lined up. Maybe this drive shaft is bad. That um, knuckle when I moved it. It is not bad at all now. I'm, I'm definitely able to spin the whole thing. I can feel it engaged with it. Let me bring you over here. Maybe you can hear it. See if you can hear it for me. I'm going to do is uh, show you what I mean here. It's going to be right in this area. Why don't you listen up right in here? I don't hear it now. I don't feel it or nothing. Yeah, we may have gotten lucky here. Because, like I said, this drive shaft was kind of it definitely has a detent a notch right in the center there where apparently it's been riding most of its life kind of like the steering head bearings on a motorcycle because normally you're going straight down the road and they put the most impact on that part of the of the race you know there's definitely a little plane here this could be it and what was happening was when it would turn around it would kind of kick it and then because of a little bit of play here on the spline it would kind of do some lateral force. That's hypothesis at this point. I don't know, but I'm just not, I'm just not getting it. There's no noise coming out of it, so let's. Oh, come on. There it goes. Yeah, we're gonna have to um, probably just replace this. I think we're just gonna replace it. Let me show you what I mean about that, uh, whoops, about this part. This is a, some sort of a, I forgot what they call it. There's some sort of a hydraulic damper. It must be something goes this way. I, I don't really remember. I read about it in the service manual, but I'm not sure. And what you do is you end up putting 90 mLs of 90 weight in here, 80W90, and you see there's a seal up here. And so you put this in, and of course this is, <laughs> This is angled downward, so it's difficult to keep it in. So 
The best way to do it is to disconnect the other shock and then pick it up so it's a little higher than level with a, with a jack stand. Then put the uh, differential back together, otherwise this pisses out everywhere. There's really no other way to do it. And then, um, or, or you can shove it in there with the um, drive shaft. It's another way to do it, that would go in. So you put it together, um, you know, sticking out of the differential and then put differential back in. I've done it that way too, but you know, either way. And then, um, I forgot what it does, but what we have here is a, I think we got a problem in this drive shaft. Cause like I said, I cannot make it do it again. And I'm definitely spinning it pretty quick. Let's check it one more time. Yeah. Hmm. I wish there was a way I could turn it quicker, but it just isn't. Uh, and without the wheel on it, it's gonna be impossible to do. So we'll just have to go with it this way. I just don't feel it, don't hear it. Let me pull it back a little bit. There's another possibility too that it, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and just order a, we'll order a drive shaft for it. I'll use one and hopefully the U-joint will be better. Um, I don't know if I can replace that U-joint. I would do that, but this one ain't no C-clipped in. You see it's all, dimpled in now there are ways around that but okay let's um pick it up when we get the uh, new parts all right i went ahead and got my got us a uh a new one well replacement drive shaft but you know i'm thinking there's got to be a way to get this apart i'd really like to see what's inside here um i'm sure you would too let's um see if we can get it apart i'm pretty sure i know how it goes together and uh, the telltale sign is it's got a split ring up here clip. You can kind of see that right there. And I think it's one of these deals where you push down um, on one part of it, like press it, and it pushes against the spring, which I'll show you on the parts fish. And then you can get that ring, that clip out, and then you just release the pressure and it all comes up. Kind of commonly like on uh, shock absorber parts and things like that, different suspension parts. But anyway, um, let me show you what it looks like on the parts fish. All right, so here it is on the parts fish. Uh, as you can see, there's our um, part right there. And if you trace it out to the end, this uh, first spring, I think, is the spring that's actually in the final drive assembly. It keeps that pressure I was telling you about before, that thrust pressure forward. So we don't have to worry about that. But right there, number 11 is a clip. Let's see, ring st stopper ring, yeah. Stopper ring or spring? Yeah, ring stopper. And then there's another one there and some sort of little spring or some. And these are the two things that, they, I, forgot. <laughs> I don't know what they do. Well, I wanna figure it out. Um, it says that it's a, let's see if we can get it. A cam damper, number two is a damper cam and then number three which mates to it is a lifter damper cam damper and lifter damper man i'm interested to see how the hell this thing works it's got to be some sort of a you know a twisting deal where you know um when the two of them go together they kind of rock and then do this sort of thing that's the only thing i can think of it would be kind of kind of like a um Oh, oh, what would it be like? It would be like the clutch, uh, like a slipper clutch, where on deceleration, there's some ramps inside there, some some angled pieces that when it pushes it from the, dr the formerly driven side, it loosens the clutch up a little bit and allows it to slip. Maybe that's exactly what that's for. Maybe that's not necessarily on the drive or the pressure side. Maybe that's to give it some dampening uh, if you decelerate, like drop a gear and drop the clutch out, or something like that. Let's see if we can get it apart and take a look at it. It'd be interesting to see. All right, so I think the way this needs to go is uh, this needs to be, actually, let's do it this way. Yeah, this is better. All right, so the way I'm thinking is 
this um, gear needs to be, or not gear, this spline, this collar needs to be pushed down against that spring. I think the shaft is locked in at this end because of this other stopper clip up in that side. Um, otherwise, there really be no way to press against it. So what I did was, um, you know, just like you'd have with a valve spring compressor, um, you have something that opens up to a, uh, with, with some sort of an opening like this, you know, three quarters of a circle with an opening, and then you can reach in and get whatever clip you want out of it. So that's what I kind of made here, just out of an old, I don't know what it was, cobbled up a couple pieces of bearing material for something and made a driver. What I'll do is I'll take a um, something tiny like this, put it right on top, and uh, we'll uh, run the uh, jack down to it, uh, or put a spacer here, whatever, and just put some pressure on and see if we can get in there and um, and get that little clip out of it. Let me see if we can get some more light on in here for you. It is what it is. Uh, there we are. Might be a little bit better for you. Maybe, maybe not. How's that? Yeah. Not too bad. All right, so I don't know if this is going to work, so let's just put some pressure on and see what happens. Ooh, look at that. Looks like that that is going down, and the shaft is staying put. Let's see how far we can go with it. further we can go to clear that uh, space for that little clip, the better. Yeah, that's not bad. Look at that. Look at that. Whee. So you can see right down in there now, the throat of it. All right, see if we can get that out. What the hell? Can't wait. Ken Hoyt. <laughs> Who's Ken Hoyt? It is the guy I hired in HR. He's the uh, purveyor of all things healthy, wealthy, and wise. Ken Hoyt, like chicken soup. Ken Hoyt. Let's see if we can get it out. Oh, come on, babe. Aha, 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 got it. Look at that. Not too shabby. Let me get a magnet and we'll pull that out. There you are. All right, now we'll just let off on it nice and easy. See what happens. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, there's a head. My jack won't clear all the way, so I'm gonna have to take this out and hopefully it doesn't fly off. There we go. Still had a little bit of uh, spring pressure. Huh. 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 Brought you over here with a little bit more light. Uh, my light just crapped out, but yeah, that's exactly what this does. See, it's a cam and you have the lobes and so what you end up having is an action like this. So it is a damper, both ways. It'll go both ways. Ha, ah, hey, you know what, to each his own. Um, I like lesbians because they both like the same thing I do. So uh, basically, uh, hey, if it goes both ways, it's good for me. Now, whether it's worn out or not, I don't know. There seems to be a lot of wear on there. Let's see if we can get it out apart the rest of the way. We'll take a closer look at it, but that's pretty interesting. Okay, yeah, so this is um, how it looks with the big Fumunga spring. That's inside there, so you got the spring, you got this guy, and then you got this guy. This is obviously the protrusion here that comes out and articulates with the final drive. So, uh, and this locks into the um, actual drive shaft itself, so you have that connection. So, um, you know, when you're, when you're putting power to it, and in this case, um, when it's rotating clockwise in this manner, you're actually going forward uh, on the motorcycle, so I'll just duplicate it that way. So when you're putting power to it, that means it's pushing this way. So the drive shaft wants to turn it that way, and so it'll damper it by 
causing this to move in and out like that. Okay, so as it pulls it and then it'll drop back. Um, these things sometimes clunk and I have uh, felt that before when you first let the clutch out, especially pulling a sidecar over here with extra weight. Uh, and uh, usually when you read on forms, it's because these things are under lubricated, but this one was well lubricated. I think it was just getting wore out. Probably a little bit um, needs some polishing or something. We're gonna replace it anyway, as we said. But that's interesting how that works. So on deceleration, the driven, the formerly driven side is now the drive side. So when you hit the, um, when you when you slow down really quick, um, it's gonna want to do that, and so it's gonna ride up and give you some damper that way because now it's it's going in that direction. But this slows down significantly relative to the drive shaft, so it gives you some. Um, dampening there and the spring just accommodates for that in and out so it'll ride up and ride back or ride up and ride back that's pretty interesting I've never seen you know I've, I've seen these kind of technology before and like clutches and so forth it's very similar to that but oh, it's just kind of interesting to take a look at this apart yeah why not you know I'm gonna replace the whole damn thing anyway and the way this housing works here as you can see there is a spline up in here that grabs the actual housing itself and then your main spline which again grabs that um, uh, that piece I just showed you the cam part so let's take a look at this um, this has got a seal around here which is pretty trashed uh, and that's what seals in around the um, actual final drive to keep this gear oil in here this is where you put like 90 mls of 90 weight in here so when this thing's together there's an o-ring up here this o-ring seals off the back side here all right so now it's together so when you put 90 mls of uh of lube in here um it'll stay inside there of course you know you can just dump that in because there's a little bit of space uh between the um that uh, spline part that comes out to the to the dr final drive and and the seal this seal actually gets sealed up of course by the final drive itself so you put 90 mls in here plug the thing in and it keeps um, lube inside there to lubricate all those parts I showed you before. So this seal is kind of trashed, so that's probably why it was leaking out, probably why it wore a little prematurely. Um, I'm kind of looking at the end of this spline here. This doesn't look too terribly good. Let's see where that articulates with and figure out what the hell is going on with that. That end there, um, shiny spot, is where this little retaining uh, item goes. You can see that recess, which is a little shiny. That's where that little clip went. So clip goes in the groove. This pushes up against it. And I guess just a little bit of movement caused that a uh, little bit of wear on that uh, spline. No problem. So yeah, pretty interesting. So the order of assembly would be that body, then the spring, and then the cam parts that you saw. And then the um, the, the actual, uh, uh, this, this guy here, which is this little dealio. And you push down on it again, and then you put the clip in, and when you release off, the spring pressure pushes this up and holds the thing in place. Pretty simple, but certainly effective, I guess. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting. I kind of always wonder what was inside that. Well, that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, not much to the diagnosis. I'm quite confident that it is that shaft. Uh, I cannot reproduce it by sticking that back in and just spinning it. And that's probably because there's no thrust pressure on it from the spring that goes up against where the differential goes. Remember that uh, the differential has that spring in it which keeps that drive shaft forward. So there's pressure on that drive shaft longitudinally. Now I'm thinking because of that pressure, a little bit of wear in the splines and that little notchy stiff point of the of the uh, actual, you know, U-joint. I think when it's coming around, it's kind of clicking, you know, it's kind of doing its thing. Plus, I'm not entirely confident about that, that um, cam thing I just showed you in that uh, damper part in the back there, because this thing has been clunking when you let the clutch out under certain circumstances uh, for a couple of years now. Uh, you just go start off in first gear, kind of feel it in the uh, foot peg, like clunk, and that would be, you know, definitely something that that drive line would do if it was kind of, you know, catching in there or something, or if it was winding up and then kind of hanging up and then released. It felt just like that, so. I think we'll be able to fix, you know, both of those problems because, I, like I said, I can't find anything wrong with it spinning it, you know, just loosely right now as far as the internals uh, with that drive shaft. So I think, like I said, I think we're going to fix both the problems. So 
I got a couple other th things I'm gonna do to this, so I'm not on camera. I got a little coolant leak issue around the crossover tubes that I've been, it's pesky. <laughs> I've been dealing with a couple of years. So I'm gonna try to do that while it's up here. We'll wait for a drive shaft to come and we'll stick it in and see how it works. But I'll give you an update uh, when that happens. So until next time, thanks for watching. Ride safe. Whoops. Adios.